Did you know Beal had fifty uh, before you before it tipped tonight? Of course I did. Okay. Did you know how many you needed to to uh, take the lead? No, I didn't go that level. I I watched everybody in the league. I know what he's what he's doing. He's obviously been playing at a high level. But anytime somebody gets fit, do you hear about it? Did you think about it at all from a scoring title perspective, or just hey, Bradley Beal got fifty? That's, that is the second thought <laughs> for sure. For me earlier, I would argue that teams have been terrified by Steph for <laughs> a long time, and last season the dip was obviously just because of so many injuries and, and the whole team. But how has he managed to elevate his play? this season what did you find in your piece well look you know i think the thing that's impressive about steph this year is he's playing without the same kind of supporting cast mm -hmm. and he is not playing for championships anymore right right now they are 32 and 25 with him and one and seven without him okay without steph curry they are basically a 10 and 72 team that's what that translates to over the course of an 82 game season and i thought the most fascinating thing in talking to him talking to him like you know you know the difference. You know what it's like to be playing meaningful games in June and in deep into NBA Finals. How are you getting up for these games right now? When this game right now, this game against Pelicans, this was for 10th place. Mm -hmm. This is for a spot in the play-in tournament. And he yep. goes, I had nine months <laughs> to just recharge the battery. He was home like so many parents in this country, homeschooling R Riley, right? His, his seven-year-old daughter then, now she's eight. He was a second grade teacher on Zoom. <laughs> And I, I said, well, were you good at it? Did you have fun? And he goes, well, I enjoyed it, but I don't think I was very good. Yeah. I'm not, I was being compared to her friends that she normally hangs out with, so I guess I wasn't a good hang. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like, it was, I mean, I think he just had nine months off to miss basketball and nine months off to realize, you know what, you only get to do this for a certain amount of time in your career. And he has that joy and he has that infectiousness that really elevates everyone around him. And, and I think... You know, especially this this last year or so, we've all had to you know be at home and we're kind of lonely and the guys on the road this year. You, you don't have a lot of connection to people, but when you go to work with a guy like Steph Curry, it, it makes your day a little brighter. And I think that's what's really happened with the Warriors this year. I mean, just talking to Steve Kerr, it's just, you know, he, I could feel him, him smiling through the phone. Mm. <laughs> well, I actually think, you know what? I think Steph Curry actually believed he could lead this team yeah. to the championship. What I... When I'm yeah. watching him play, I'm not going to downplay him anymore. Like, I'm not going to say anything negative about Steph Curry. Like, what is he playing for? Yes, he has great joy, but he's playing to win. I remember about two months back that he was getting on his on the guys on the <laughs> sideline. Like, like something ridiculous. that we never seen Steph Curry do with a passion, like, about winning. And mm -hmm. so he's coming out here to win games right now. This Golden State Warriors team is currently sitting in the eighth spot and they got a chance to continue to climb. And I'm looking at, I'm like, no, this boy right here is on a mission. He is on a mission and he's trying to shock the world. So I'm not going to downplay and say that Steph Curry is not trying to win a title. I strongly believe, I don't know what's going on through his mind at all. I know he's out there trying to win games. You know what's terrifying, Perk, Rachel? The idea of Steph Curry in a one-game play-in tournament <laughs> that could send you home. That is absolutely correct. Ramona, thank you so much for you joining us today. We really appreciate it. Up next. Half a point ahead of Bradley Beal right now for that scoring championship. But when you hear from Steph after a game like that and what we're being able to see on display constantly, uh, what are your thoughts? My thoughts are the play-in idea was genius <laughs> by Adam Silver. Look at the teams that are involved currently. Bron and AD, Steph, Ja Morant in the West. In the East, Russ and Beal, Tatum, LaMelo Ball. They're all a part of the playing scenarios. And so for Steph Curry to be playing the way he's playing, it lets everybody know once that start, he has a puncher's chance with the Golden State Warriors. Well, it's interesting because we, we counted out a lot of teams. Lord. I wouldn't think we'd be talking about the Wizards being in a play-in tournament. They were 17-32 and 32 on April 5th. That's crazy. I know. Yeah, and... April 5th, this was a team with a 4% chance of getting in the play-in. They've mm -hmm. won uh, 15 of 19 games. And it starts with Bradley Beal, who earlier this year, everybody else in the league had him asking for a trade here, going there, except Bradley Beal. And this is what makes him, to me, the epitome of a franchise player, why he's so beloved in Washington and respected around the league, was instead of talking about what he didn't have in Washington, where he might want to go, he kept doubling down I've got to do more. I've got to get this season turned around. And listen, this is a player who, you know, has a lot of money on the line moving forward. 
could do an extension this summer, be a free agent. The following summer, he didn't shut it down. He and Russell Westbrook together have revitalized this Washington season and now look to be in that play-in tournament and in that win or go home scenario two players who can knock anybody out in that one or two game scenario and when you talk about ownership of being a franchise player look no further than russell westbrook because he wanted to be in okc he doubled down he got a chance to play with kd and james there he got a chance to be the mvp when they both left he got a chance to join Harden in houston and you know what else everybody got a chance to slander russ's name <laughs> players in the league People in the media, now all of a sudden he's breaking a historic record by the big O that we never thought would be broken. So I would like somebody to send me a personal compilation of all of the people that slandered Russ over the last 10 years because it seems like I'm a, his defense attorney. Mm -hmm. Like this guy, when he's healthy, has been outstanding, Maria, and he's now, along with Bradley Bill, propelling the Washington Wizards. His first six seasons, he only had eight triple doubles. He's had eight triple doubles in the last 10 games, so obviously he's still really efficient. But we really focus on efficiency, I feel like, now, and that's been taking away some of the bite of Russell Westbrook's game and what we should be appreciating about him. We need to take a look at the standings because, obviously, there's a lot to try and understand with just about four games left to play for every team right now. After having just a 4% chance to make the play-in tournament a month ago, the Wizards are now almost a lock, but the real interesting part of the standings are toward the middle, with teams 4 through 7 separated by two games. And right now the Celtics are just on the outside, one game behind the Heat for the top six spot. And we need a playoff expert. Luckily we have one on hand, our NBA analyst and play-in professor, Kirk Goldsberry. Please break down the East for us. That's right, Maria. These two games with the Heat and the Celtics are simply the biggest games all year for both of these teams. Now, Boston comes in just one game behind Miami. If Miami finds a way to sweep this miniseries in Boston, they're going to stay up here in this group of top six. They're not going to the plan. In that scenario, Boston very likely will. If Boston can manage just a split here, I like their chances to stay out of the plan for one big reason. Look at this. This is the Heat's remaining schedule. After these two games in Boston, they have potential losses in these games with Philly and Milwaukee looming. Compare that to Boston's remaining schedule. Two gimmies here after these games with the Heat. Games against the Cavs and the Wolves. Very winnable games for Boston. If the scenario plays out like that, if Boston's able to get a split, I really like their chances to jump back up into the top six and send Miami into the play-in tournament where they would face potentially the Hornets. Now, they could probably win that game. The Wizards would play the Pacers. I like the Wizards there. If that happens, let's give the Red Hot Wizards the eighth seed, and the Eastern Conference bracket would look like this. Sixers, Wizards, Knicks versus Hawks, Bucks, Celtics, and look at that. The Nets versus the Heat in the first round of the playoffs. Ooh, let's go. Let's talk about it. Since we got the Heat coming up anyway, uh, Jason Tatum right now getting ready to take on the Heat, and the Celtics are one game behind him. Are the Heat a scary team to face in the playoffs? The defending right? Eastern Conference okay. champion, especially with a healthy Bam and Jimmy Butler, yes, they are. <laughs> Who would you not want to see from the bottom half of the Eastern Conference standings if you're at the top of the Heat? The Miami Heat. And the reason why, Eric Spolstra. See, what ends up happening is certain teams and franchises play for the regular season. The Miami Heat built for the playoffs. And I'm going to tell you something deeper in the box score I've watched them do. They've extended their defense. And what that told me is they're not going to let people like James Harden and Kyrie Irving walk the ball up. I've seen them playing a lot of zone. I've seen them sliding Trevor Ariza into different lineups defensively so they can switch everything. And so when the Miami Heat come playoff time, they're going to look vastly different than they look in the regular season, especially when they're healthy. I love talking about playoff time, and we've talked about this before, Woj, but if you look at the top of the standings, a team like Milwaukee, they're trying to build themselves for the playoffs. They could face a team like Brooklyn in the second round, but that was the plan all along. Yeah, Milwaukee was a team that uh, was historically great uh, defensively the last two seasons, had that number one seed ultimately in the postseason couldn't score enough couldn't get enough shot creation uh, beyond Giannis Antetokounmpo Chris Middleton now with Drew Holiday there Bobby Portis coming in having a really good offensive season uh, this is a team that they believe is better equipped to advance in the playoffs 
you know, two great confidence building wins against the Nets last weekend back to back, but a Nets team without James Harden. And also an improved Giannis that has confidence in his jump shot. They're posting him up more, and they're not just using him at the top of the floor. He's at the elbow, he's on the wing, he's playing with the back to the basket, and he's going to punish smaller guys. But you saw when he's playing against DeAndre Jordan, he was bullying him as well. So Giannis is playing with a lot of confidence. Yeah, we saw the battle that it went back and forth with the Nets. Do you believe, though, in the Bucks now in the postseason? I do believe okay. in the Bucks because of Drew Holiday and his three-point shooting and his ability to play defense. Okay, if you believe, I'm going to believe I'll Let's roll with Jalen everywhere Dream work, dream work. <laughs> All throughout the NBA. <laughs> we're getting you set for tip-off between the Celtics and the Heat. I'm going to you live from the Seaport District in New York City, brought to you by Chase. Very special Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Absolutely. We want to celebrate you. The show is for you, basically. <laughs> and a little bit of the tip-off and the doubleheader that we have on a Sunday matinee. Maria Taylor alongside Adrian Wardanowski. We got Jalen Rose here. And we had some bomb games last night. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we should just revisit a few of them. Because if you missed it, we got to get you all the way caught up so you can get ready for today. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about who's playing with confidence. Presented by New Amsterdam Vodka. What a night it was Saturday night. Oh, what a night. <laughs> Russell West Westbrook, let's start with him, tied Oscar Robertson for the most triple doubles in NBA history. It was also his 10th triple double versus the Pacers, his most against a single opponent. And in that exact same game, his teammate, Bradley Beal, recorded his second 50-point game of the season, which joins Jason Tatum and Steph Curry as the only players to score 50 points in multiple games this season.